can slide. Making this right is all I care about. Didn't question little things when I should have. Won't your wife be wondering where you are? She trusts me. But little things add up. Look at me. Welcome back. That was a clip from the new thriller, Anatomy of a Scandal, based on the international best-selling novel of the same name. Our next two guests are the series lead stars. Welcome to The Social, Sienna Miller and Rupert Friend. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's great to see you both. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Anatomy of a Scandal, this show is so suspenseful, so provocative. Now, you two play married couple James and Sophie Whitehouse. Sienna, can you set up what the series is all about for our audience? You know, it's a pretty binging, binge-worthy six-part drama um, by David E. Kelly and Melissa James Gibson. They did The Undoing and Big Little Lies, and it's basically focused around a politician who is accused of, of who has an affair, and I play his wife, Michelle Dockery, plays the barrister that prosecutes him because things really unravel. And it's sort of about, so what's it about? It's about it's class about and privilege. privilege and and consent. It's about very yeah. current issues that we're dealing with in the world. But in that kind of David E. Kelly, it's very uh, addictive. exciting and addictive. Well, I, I, I can't mean, speak I, anymore. I'm no, so no. sorry. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> I um, can't get words out. As, uh, as you touched on, you know, the series is touching on these really, really current issues around consent, um, around what happens when an affair suddenly is suddenly looked at through a different lens, around what constitutes rape and so on. Um, so, Rupert, what was your first reaction when you read this script? Because that's a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of landmines there, potentially. I mean, the truthful answer is I, I really, really didn't like this James Whitehouse guy. I didn't like the world of the rich, privileged elite uh, in politics. I thought it was all kind of smarmy and entitled. Um, and then the challenge that our wonderful director, S.J. Clarkson, laid down for me was to try and see it from his point of view, someone who's basically had everything they've ever wanted, has the seemingly perfect life. And, uh, and effectively has invented their own version of the truth and is watching it crumble around him. I want to stay there, Rupert, then, because uh, you did, as you said, you, you weren't really, a, like, this character had no appeal for you. At first, you turned down the role twice. Ultimately, as you said, you accepted the challenge to get inside this guy's head, even though not that great of a guy. So what was it like being in that head and living in that headspace? Um... I mean, it was very, very dual because being in his world and headspace was pretty odious, but being with this lot was fantastic. So <laughs> I kind of uh, had to split my time that way. <laughs> now, Sienna, for you, we just talked about Rupert getting into the head of someone who may not be all that familiar or appealing to him personally. Now, your character, Sophie, going through a lot, invasion of privacy, betrayal, intense media sensationalism, maybe a little bit more familiar for you. So what was it like for you to step into that space or back into that space? You know, it was really interesting. When I read the script, I was kind of questioning why I was drawn to putting myself back into a somewhat familiar environment in the sense of, of, of many young girls at that time's experience of knowing that intensely personal information was about to be published and that there was very little you could do to stop it. And that was something that I, I really encountered too often when I was younger. Um, it was interesting to revisit it with an adult lens in a way and to have a different response to it than myself. I mean, Sophie, the character I play, and I are very different. She's very quite interior and contained and unemotional and in that very British upper class way. Um, I just found it kind of meta and it was obviously being created by some of the best creators of this format in the world. And so the ingredients were all there to make something interesting. Mm. And let's talk about some of the people who made this come to be, because it's adapted from a book written by former journalist Sarah Vaughan, who had a front row seat observing political scandals and how UK tabloid culture uh, really sensationalized these stories. So, uh, Sienna, is Anatomy of a Scandal also exposing the role and the frequent irresponsibility of British tabloid culture and the harm it can cause? You know, the show is less focused on that side of things because I think it's quite clear that there's culpability and that that goes alongside with being a politician. Um, if you're projecting morals and morality and writing laws, you really have to be an upstanding person. 
And in many senses, that, that means the gloves are slightly off. I think the kind of tabloid exposure that used to exist really didn't hold anybody to account and, and would go after anyone. Um, this is really more focused on privilege and what enables that kind of behavior in a certain type of man. Um, and also consent, which we discussed before. What is that? How difficult is it to prosecute a rape? And in my character sense, betrayal, um, you know, the shocks really keep coming for her. She's on a, com on a train that's left a station and is moving extremely fast. And I think the life that she'd spent all of her energy building is deteriorating rapidly and as is everyone's in this story. So it's quite a fast paced, exciting thing that deals with very juicy issues. Mm. So the team behind uh, the series, you know, they really are a who's who of thriller television. Um, 11 time Emmy winner, you mentioned David E. Kelly. He of course created hits like Ally McBeal, Big Little Lies and Nine Perfect Strangers. He's the show's executive producer. So Rupert, I'm curious to know, what do you think it is about this specific type of suspense genre that people seem to love so much? Um, I think when it's well done, it deals with the the, the rawest of human emotions, um, which in our story's case, it's really that thing that David E. Kelly and S.J. Clarkson, our wonderful director, have done so well, which is lift the veil on a seemingly perfect life and reveal that it's actually founded on, a, on in this case, a bunch of, um, well, lies, frankly. And so <laughs> that makes for uh, a very dramatic and combustible um, framework in which in which to play. So we get to see the, the, the house tumbling down around them. I like what you said, combustible framework, because as, as we've talked about, the series really is, um, you know, current with the mainstream conversation that we've been having over the last few years around consent, around privilege. So Sienna, was it important for you that there was a woman directing the series, S.J. Clarkson, to get into all that nuance and get into this complicated subject matter for all six episodes? I think it was a really smart decision. I'm excited that in a 20-year career, in the last five years, I've really almost singularly worked with women, but in the past, only twice. So. The world has really shifted, and noticeably so. This is a story that I don't think would have been told five years ago. I just don't think people were as interested in the female experience, which is baffling, considering we represent over half the population and deserves to see ourselves represented on screen. But yes, I understand the creative decision to hire a woman to tell the story. That being said, I can't wait for the time when we don't even mention the gender of a director. Um, and I think in a ring against anyone, male or female, S.J. Clarkson might win because she's just so knowledgeable and brilliant. And it was really lovely seeing that picture of her. Yeah, <laughs> she's off was. doing a Marvel film. We're seeing her tomorrow, but yeah. we miss her madly. Well, I mean, it sounds like you guys had such a great working family. Um, in addition to both of you, there's Downton Abbey's Michelle Dockery, uh, Naomi Scott, also in the series. And all of you together help illuminate uh, the politics of privilege around the character of Rupert's character, James, specifically. And this idea that there are certain people who get a different set of rules. So we're in Canada. Uh, Rupert, just want to know from you, how prevalent are these types of old boys clubs in British culture? They're prevalent here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think very, I mean, we actually both live in New York, so I, I'm not really in touch with with Britain as much as it might sound like I should be. Um, but I know that those networks are still in place. We, we see that kind of cronyism playing out in all different echelons of society. Um, and I think maybe now, only, only recently, are they starting to be examined as being the kind of nepotistic and possibly corrupt uh, organizations that they, they may be. Uh, it was revealed that future seasons are going to have an anthology format and focus on different scandals. Do you have any hints on what type of scandals we'll see next? And if not, what would you like to see? We didn't really know that that was yeah, that's part of the conversation, but that's very exciting. I think it's clear at the end of the season that there is room to see what happens next in terms of um, Michelle Dockery's character and what her next trial will be. Maybe a Canadian trial. A Canadian trial. Oh. <laughs> I don't We've got know. Some. I haven't even thought about it. I'm sure, I mean, I can think of several. Sienna and Rupert, thank you for joining us today. It was a pleasure to get to speak with both of you. Thank you for thank having you. us. Anatomy of a Scandal is out this Friday. Don't